Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janmadhyasya yato niviyad itaratas charte sua vigyasvarat Tene Brahma Hirdaya Adikavaye Muyanti Yat Surayaha Techo Vari Medam Yata Vini Mayo Yatra Chisargo Mesha Dam Nasvena Sadani Rasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi O my Lord Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O all-pervading personality Godhead, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth and the primeval cause of all causes, of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji, the original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen in fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature appear factual although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Pujita Kaitro Vocha Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mulanam Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimba Purir Ishwaraha Sadyo Hidi Avurudyate Tra Kriti Bihi Susu Subis Dakshanat Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God-realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpaturur galitam falam Sukhamakad amrita dravya samyutam Pipata bhagavatam rasam alayam Muhur aho raska buvi bhavakaha O expert and thoughtful man, relish Srimad Bhagavatam the mature fruit of the desire to hear Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful, even though its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Shinvatam Svakata Krishna 
Punya Shravana Kirtana Vidyantaksto Bhadrani Vidu Nati Suhit Satam To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta preso badresu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati utamasloke bhaktir bhavati naistaki in this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhavo kamalo badayas chaye chetetari navitam by this development of devotional service, one becomes fixed, one becomes free from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus material loss and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso bhagavat bhakti yogataha bhagavat tattva vigyanam Mukta Sangha Sijayate. When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service, and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate Hridaya Grantis, Chidyante Sarvasamsaya. Shiyante Jashikarmani, Drista Evat Manishwari. Thus, Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of Samsayam Samagram. Understanding the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Shrimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 15, Text 25 and 26. Jaloka Sam Jale Yadvam Jaloka Sam Jale Yadvam Mahanto Dant Ani Yasaha Mahanto Dant Ani Yasaha Durbalan Balino Rajan Durbalan Balino Rajan Mahanto Balino Mita Evam balistair yadubir. Evam balistair yadubir. Mahadibir itaran vibhu. Mahadibir itaran vibhu. Yadun yadubir anyonyam. Yadun yadubir anyonyam. Bubaran sanjaharatha. Bubaran sanjaharatha. Translation. By Srila Prabhupada. O king, as in the ocean, the bigger and stronger aquatics swallow up the smaller and weakened ones. So also the Supreme Personality got it to lighten the burden of the earth has engaged the stronger Yadus, Yadu to kill the weaker and the bigger Yadu to kill the smaller. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. In the material world, the struggle for existence and survival of the fittest are laws because in the material world there is disparity between conditioned souls due to everyone's desire to lord it over the material resources. This very mentality of lording it over the material nature is the root cause of conditioned life. 
and to give facility to such imitation lords, the illusory energy of the Lord has created a disparity between conditioned living beings by creating the stronger and the weaker in every species of life. Let me read that again. And to give facility to such imitation lords, the illusory energy of the Lord has created a disparity between conditioned living beings by creating the stronger and the weaker in every species. The mentality of lording it over the material nature and the creation has naturally created a disparity and therefore the law of struggle for existence. In the spiritual world, there is no such disparity, nor is there such a struggle for existence. In the spiritual world, there is no struggle for existence because everyone there exists eternally. There is no disparity because everyone wants to render service to the Supreme Lord. And no one wants to imitate the Lord in becoming the beneficiary. The Lord, being creator of everything, including the living beings, factually is the proprietor and enjoyer of everything that be. But in the material world, by the spell of maya, or illusion, the eternal relation with the Supreme Personality of God is forgotten. And so the living being is conditioned under the law of struggle for existence and survival of the fittest. Sila Prabhupada Patita Bhavana Kije. So this is called real understanding of life. Because we all experience the struggle for existence and survival of the fittest. Or the big fish eats the little fish. And so why does that ex exist? It's, it's called disparity between conditioned souls. And Prabhupada says, it's due to everyone's desire to lord it over material resources. I have an interesting story in this respect. Uh, there's uh, one devo devotee I know is a very passionate person. And he's been married about five or six times. And uh, with his latest wife, who's, a, who's like, I don't know, 35, 40 years younger than him, he came to visit uh, the Vancouver Temple when I was there. And he wanted to stay overnight with his wife. I said, sure. So we went to uh, open the door of a guest apartment that we have, and the key didn't work. So I told him, I don't know what to do. Now, there was a very small window uh, in, in, the, in the kitchen. And the kitchen was right next to the uh, entrance of that apartment. And I looked at it, and I said, well, it doesn't look like any of us can get through that window. It's too small. He said, no, I can. I said, what? I mean, he's, he's, you know, he's a little bit big. I said, well, you don't want to hurt yourself. He said, no, 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 I can do it. And I, it was the most amazing thing I've seen uh, in a long time. He somehow or other, I mean, it was very difficult, squeezed himself through that small little window. And, you know, he went head first. So when you go head first and you're squeezing yourself through a small thing, you sort of, get to a point where the, your, the center of gravity is such that you fall. And he fell, and it was a big thud. Like It looked like he hit himself on his head or something, right? And he opened the door and let his wife in. He said, thank you very much. <laughs> now, the question is, what prompted him to go through such a struggle to get in the squeeze through that small window, which is... And if you had seen that window, you'd say, no, it's impossible. No one can squeeze through it. 
Well, it was his desire to have an uncomfortable bed to sleep with his uh, new wife. So you see, this disparity between conditioned soul is due to everyone's desire to lord it over the material resources and to enjoy, but why? Because one wants to enjoy sense gratification. And Prabhupada says, this very mentality of lording it over the material nature is the root cause of conditioned life. And then the next sentence is very shocking. He says, and to give facility to such imitation lords, the illusory energy of the Lord has created a disparity between conditioned living beings by creating the stronger and the weaker in every species of life. So that's an amazing statement. So why is it that there are stronger and weaker and the stronger try and exploit the weaker and so forth? It's the Lord that gives the facility to such imitation lords. That's an amazing statement. You know? So, uh, and therefore, the illusory energy of the Lord has created a disparity between conditioned living beings by creating the stronger and the weaker in every species of life. And you see that. I mean, I see it in cows. There is always a dominant cow. And it's called, and, 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 and that phenomenon is called the alpha male. Like amongst monkeys, the same thing. There's an alpha male that dominates the other monkeys. And among, amongst tigers and lions, it's the same thing. And amongst human beings also. So Prabhupada says that in the spiritual world, there's no such disparity between the strong and the weak. Nor is there a struggle for existence. Well, the, the struggle for existence, the cause of it is the desire that individual living entities have to dominate nature and dominate people. But you cannot dominate nature, you will lose. The nature's Krishna's Daivi Maya or Daivi Prakriti. It's his divine energy. It's his, his, or even though it is his it is his inferior spiritual energy, it's still spiritual. It's eternal, so you cannot defeat it. But it is possible to defeat people and animals. That is possible. And therefore, this struggle for existence, people are struggling against nature to find a permanent place for sense gratification, and it's impossible. So the only struggle that they can win temporarily is, is a strong uh, dominating the weak, the strong people dominating the weak people. So some people are physically strong, and other people who are weaker physically, they have a gun or a weapon, and they can beat the stronger person. Just like lions and tigers and gorillas, they're, they're much stronger than human beings. But yet human beings can defeat them with weapons, like spears or clubs or knives or guns or cannons, etc. So there is what you call physical strength and there is also intelligence. Just like Prabhupada tells the story, there was a lion who easily was catching rabbits and eating them. So the king of the rabbits went to the lion and said, Sir, you are eating us and you cause absolute terror and fear. What if we make a deal? Every week or so you have you need to have some food we'll send you one rabbit and leave the rest of us alone so the lion said okay that's a deal i won't have to struggle hard to catch you guys but you better be on time so he said yes yes sir no problem so the king of rabbits arranged for one rabbit to voluntarily walk to the lion's den and sacrifice himself and that way it saved everyone else from the terror of this lion chasing them and eating them, catching and eating them. So time went on and then this one uh, little rabbit, it was his turn to be eaten by the tiger. 
So the rabbit was thinking, what am I going to do? I don't want to be eaten by this lion. So it started going toward the lion, and it thought of a strategy. So it purposely came late, and the lion was really upset when, when the rabbit arrived. He said, why were you so late? He said, oh, sir, there was another lion. He was trying to eat me, but I did everything I could to get away from him so that you could eat me. He said, very good, my son. He said, where is that lion? He said, oh, I can show you. So the rabbit took the lion to an abandoned old well. And the lion said, I don't see any lion here. He said, no, sorry, he's down there. He said, really? So he looked down there, and he saw his reflection in the water. And he roared at it, and the roar came back at him. And he got so angry, he jumped into the well to fight with that other lion, and he died. You see? So even though the lion was so much stronger, there was no way the rabbit could fight the lion, but he beat him with intelligence. You see? So these are Vedic examples showing us that you know, even though in the struggle for existence and survival of the fittest, sometimes intelligence can beat even raw bestial power. So, but the important point is there's no such disparity like this in the spiritual world. Uh, and there's no struggle for existence because everyone's eternal. And uh, and there's no disparity because, in other words, the, the strong eat, uh, dominate the weak or the big animal eats the little animals. It doesn't happen in the spiritual world. Why? Because everyone's desire is the same. So this is the example of concentric circles as opposed to intersecting circles. When you have concentric circles, they're all uh, are drawn around the same focal point, the same center of interest. So they don't intersect. Therefore, therefore there's no rivalry. There's no uh, competition. Uh, there's no intersection where two uh, people want the same thing. Therefore, they want to fight. So... Therefore, in the spiritual world, you don't have this disparity of the strong and the weak, or the strong eat, eat the weak, because everyone has the same desire. It's to please Krishna. So if you please Krishna, I'm happy. If I please Krishna, you're happy, because we have the same desire. So there, there is no disparity in the spiritual world because everyone wants to render service to the Supreme Lord and no one wants to imitate the Lord in becoming the beneficiary. In other words, no one is trying to take the result for themselves. They're happily giving it to the Lord. The Lord being the creator of everything, including the living beings, factually is the proprietor and enjoyer of everything that be. But in the material world, by the spell of maya, or illusion, this eternal relation with the Supreme Personality of God is forgotten. And so the living being is conditioned under the law of struggle for existence and the survival of the fittest. That's in other words, the law of the jungle. Okay, so there's more information about this and it's very interesting. Uh, in the... Uh, prayers by the personified Vedas. Um, this is a very nice prayer. By uh, Sridhar Swami. And he says, My dear Lord, I am a living entity perpetually disturbed by the conditions of material existence. I have been cracked to pieces by the smashing wheel of material existence. And because of my various sinful activities while existing in this material world, I am burning in the blazing fire of material reactions. Somehow or other, my dear Lord, I have come to take shelter under your lotus feet. Please accept me 
and give me protection. Now, this is a prayer that we should say every day. Well, the meaning of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is the same. Somehow or other, my dear Lord, I have come to take shelter under your lotus feet. Please accept me and give me protection. So that's the meaning of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra also. Please Radharani, please Krishna, protect me so that I can always engage in your service. So this type of surrender to the mercy of the Lord is the defining quality of a devotee. The devotee doesn't think that they can defeat material nature or dominate it or conquer other people. The devotee thinks, I am uh, completely surrendered to the will of the Lord. Whatever happens, I will continue my devotional service by following the instructions of my spiritual master and offering the result of all my activities to the spiritual master who offers it to the Lord. So therefore, there's a prayer, another prayer by Sridhar Swami, who says, O oh, all merciful spiritual master, representative of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, when my mind, when my mind will be completely surrendered unto your lotus feet at that time, only by your mercy shall I be able to get relief from all obstacles to spiritual life, and I shall be situated in blissful life. So this is basically a prayer that uh, is, it can be characterized as ecstatic samadhi, samadhi, ecstatic samadhi, such a prayer. Or absorption in the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which is achieved by constant engagement in devotional service to the Lord. And this constant engagement in devotional service is performed only when one works under the direction of a bona fide spiritual master. Therefore, the Vedas instruct us that in order to know the science of God or the, the science of devotional service, one has to submit oneself uh, un, uh, un, in, unto the bona fide spiritual master and in disciplic succession. This disciplic succession is called shrotriya. Shrotriya means you're constantly hearing the instructions of Guru and Krishna. So this is what's called the prime symptom of one who has become a spiritual master in disciplic succession. They are 100% fixed in bhakti yoga or devotional service. So without such help, it's impossible to overcome the influence of the material nature. So these are some points today. Are there any questions? Haribo. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna.